Okay, this is Synoptic and I'm doing a commentary for Empire Total War. I'm playing as Russia using 5 Riflemen, 8 Line Infantry, 4 Garde Cheval, and 2 Cossack Adamant Cavalry who I've hidden in the woods. My opponent playing as Great Britain is using 8 Ferguson Rifles, 6 Line Infantry, and 4 Regiment of Horse. Firstly, notice his advance. He is splitting up his army into two contingents, consisting of three line infantry, four Ferguson rifles, and two horses. So they're practically identical, one serving as a holding force and another being a flanking force. So his current tactics are quite good, but not as good as my next move, which is amazing. Uh, so at this point in the real game, I forgot where my opponent put his Ferguson rifles. So I'm going to try and find out where they are and how they're getting shot. So what I tried to do was hit one of the sides, but hitting a side is pretty hard when you forget where they are. So, sorry guys, I'm sorry. You don't have to route. You don't, guys. So in the plan, when I disrupted his rifles, I was going to advance my own, but seeming as the first part failed, I'm just going to advance anyway. I'm going to use the woods here to my advantage for some cover. Now what I'm doing here is a pretty standard move in what I like to do often. I only, I'm only having one unit of rifles in range of his, so it's, this is a one-on-one -on -one, even though there are four other units. And what this makes my opponent do normally is make him advance his men, as you can see now. The opponent gets frustrated in the fact that only one of his units is fighting. And what happens is the rest of my rifles will shoot his. So far he hasn't moved far enough. He's doing it now, I think. Yep. And just in time, the sound just cut out. It'll come back in about two minutes, so don't cry too hard. Don't worry, you have my voice. So if you've never seen the Ferguson Rifle build before, this is probably the most powerful build you can currently use post 1.3. And it is a very popular one too. And I'm well aware of how powerful the Ferguson Rifles are. And I'm going to sacrifice a lot of cavalry to slow these units down. I send my second Kozak Adam and Infantry to slow them down again. And it's going to route quite quickly as well. So I'm going to advance my line infantry, and already he's retaliating with two regiment of horse. But I'm going to set up squares and eliminate these units quickly. And since he's already gotten rid of his horse here, I'm going to send up my cavalry, and then I'm going to commence my melee charges, which is the only real advantage I have for Russia. They have an extremely high charge, but after the charge, British units, units and Russian units are quite the same. Noticing my opponent's advance of his flanking force, I'm going to start falling back my... I'm going to collapse my side. I only have two units of line infantry to hold. No long range at all. I'm already committed all my line infantry... A lot light infantry to fight his. So at this point, I'm going to sac pretty much sacrifice another heavy cavalry. This time a Garde Cheval. I'm going to just run him down the line. And so he's going to start retreating, but what's going to happen is his, all his line infantry are going to shoot mine. That's something I have to take, assuming as I have to advance all my men to get to prepare for our melee charge. And as I advance, so does his flanking force. So it's, I think he's in range now. This unit here is going to get heavily shot, and I'm going to fall that back, because now it's being f copying flanking fire from Ferguson Rifles, as well as the front. So even if I did mount a charge with this unit, it would be decimated. As you can see, I'm going to fall it back. With another another Garde Cheval, I've started charging and distracting units on his left in preparation for my charges, which are going to take place now. It's going to start off with only two or three units, but eventually I'm going to send in pretty much half my army down here to engage. And at this point, I'm going to lose this Garde Cheval. It has done its job pretty much. He's only got two two or three Ferguson's left out of the, the original one, or two left. So now I have space to start charging. And I'm going to be very, very swift with my elimination of these these units here. So that was a charge, followed by a cavalry rear charge only seconds later. My opponent is now scrambling to commit to this fight here. He probably didn't expect a melee charge, because not many players do it. However, I do it a lot gives me quite an edge, which allows me to pretty much fight the old way in the other Total War games, Hammer and Anvil style. Not as effective as before, but still gets the job done. Okay, this is the holding force that I had on his flanking force. He sent his two regiment of horse to attack my rifles. After I started charging the main body with my line infantry, I sent my rifles over here. 
So he tried to hit them from the side. But this is pretty identical to what had happened to my other cavalry. Alright, the sand's back on. Anyway, so all these units getting shot down. And after this, I'll have total cavalry superiority. So I'm being quite relentless in my cavalry charges here. And this battle is really getting quite fierce now. Not only do the British have pretty much one of the best long range units in the game, they also have some of the best line infantry in the game. So I have to play really, really hard to get rid of these guys. And there's another fight over here. That will be reinforced by my units, but he's also going to reinforce with his. I'm sending a Garde Cheval here, up here. My main objective with this unit is to kill stragglers. He doesn't interpret it that way though. He's sent up two units. He's letting off one now to reinforce the other fight over there. But he's still sending this one. He's going to put this into a box. He thinks I'm going to send that cavalry over to kill his Fergusons. But that's not what I'm going to do. As I said, I'm going to kill stragglers with that unit. Regardless, this is going to be a square. And temporarily, this will be out of the game, this unit here. So this is a pretty heavy reinforcement here from the, from the British. Lots of green, lots of red. Okay, this is where the first contact melee was. So I'm really, really scrambling here. I'm trying to reinforce my army and continue this melee assault as fast as possible. The problem with melee is your units get very tired. And when they get tired, they fight less effectively and they run a lot slower. It'll get to the point where my all my Garde Cheval are going to get exhausted. And we're going to see how slow they move. I sent another Garde Cheval in the woods here. And this is actually the unit I'm going to use to destroy the Fergusons. He's advancing again. I didn't mention it before, but the land he was on wasn't too favorable. And he wasn't killing to as many units as he probably wanted to. But now I'm going to start attacking with another Garde Cheval. The one that I initially charged into this the big fight over here. I've just won it now. But I've also lost a line infantry unit. So now that Garde Cheval, 51 strong, is charging into his Fergusons. I have my other one coming out from the woods now. He doesn't he doesn't turn his men around fast enough to shoot. He gets some shots off, but some of you just end up flying. So now I've encapsulated. And not only that, but I've also launched melee assaults with my reserve line infantry, the ones I use to protect my rifles. So I'm really, really going by the belt buckle here. That's what you have to do when um, your uh, enemy has superior long range. Well, it's either that or retreat, but who retreats these days? Oh, wait. And as I know, as I said before, you can see how slow they charge when they're tired. This one's very tired. It won't do that much damage. Very little, actually. And he now has a unit coming back. This is a large unit. But I saw this, and I've turned around all my rifles. Since I already engaged in melee on the other Fergusons, his last ones, I'm diverting all my attention to this last unit. And you can hear and now see my cavalry. So this cavalry unit is going to hit them in the rear. What I wanted to do was hit them, hit them in the rear with the cavalry first, but they're too slow, they're too tired. So <laughs> you just, you're seeing this line infantry unit. It was going to charge, but I'm falling it back until after the cavalry charge. So now that's finally going to happen. That's a rear charge. All those units are in single line. Makes it very susceptible to charges. Here come my line infantry to finish these guys off. So this this unit here is really giving me a pain. That's the one that was a square before. He committed it. He finally committed it. It has now gotten two chevrons in experience from the fighting. This will be the last unit. Okay, after about 5 million years that line infantry finally routed. And basically what we saw was a close, a very close battle with relatively average army versus probably, in my opinion, the strongest build you can make in the game. That was a good game. Good game to Taser234. Thanks for watching.